Welcome to Wing Beats, a video series focused on the study and conservation of birds, aimed at anyone with an interest in ornithology. In this episode, we will talk about the main feather tracks, as well as some relevant markings and features of a typical passerine. Non-passerines, like waders, raptors or ducks, are morphologically quite different, and they will be covered in another video. This is intended to be a visual overview of basic terminology that every birder should be familiar with. Having a good understanding of the following concepts will give you a clue of what to look for when trying to identify a bird in the field, when you often have only a few seconds before it hides or flies away. There's a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right in. The eye is dark in most cases. Some species, though, show a characteristic iris colour, especially when adult. The orbital ring is a thin area of bare skin around the eye. The eye ring is a circle of small feathers, sometimes broken into arcs above and below. The bill, with its amazing variety of shapes, is usually very helpful to determine at least the bird family or genus. The nostrils are two holes at the base of the bill that lead to the nasal cavities. The bill culmin is a dorsal ridge of the upper mandible. It can be a helpful feature in the case of some species, like buntings. The forehead. The crown, the nape, the mantle, the back, and the rump. Now, these are some relevant head plumage markings. The laws are the small region between the base of the bill and the eyes. Pale or dark, laws are important, yet not very obvious, to help us properly identify some tricky species. The eye stripe is a feathered band that extends behind the bird's eye. Laws can be considered part of the eye stripe. The supercilium, when distinctly coloured, is like an eyebrow and runs from the base of the bill, above the eyes, ending somewhere towards the rear of the head. The lateral crown stripe is the area right above the supercilium. And the median crown stripe runs across the top of the bird's head. The malar stripe, submustachial stripe, and mustachial stripe are all plumage markings extending downwards and backwards from the base of the bill. The ear coverts are distinctly coloured in a few species. The chin and the throat. The breast. The flanks. The belly. And the vent. Moving on to the wing. The scapulars are the feathers attached to the bird's shoulder, a region between the mantle and the wing. Sometimes they cover the lesser and median coverts when the wing is folded. The lesser coverts are the smallest of all the wing coverts and are found on the forewing. Next, we find the median coverts, which can sometimes show a distinct pattern. The greater coverts protect the base of the inner wing flight feathers. They can show a coloured wing bar, visible even from far away. The primary coverts protect the base of the outer wing flight feathers. The annular. These small feathers, usually three of them, can be moved independently to perform specific functions in flight, sometimes not visible, hidden by the breast feathers. 
The flight feathers are the ones responsible for keeping the bird in the air. Given the importance to be able to fly at any moment, it is critical that they don't fall out all at once when a complete molt is underway. This necessity has induced different and complex molt strategies depending on the species. The primaries. There are 10 of them, the outermost being usually reduced in size. A primary base patch is a helpful ID feature in some species. The secondaries. There are six of them. Paler edges can form a coloured panel. The tertials. There are three of them. They act mainly as a protection for the flight feathers when the wing is folded. In some cases, like the pipits, they are very long, reaching the tip of the primaries. They can show distinct coloured edges. The primary projection is the distance between the tip of the tertial feathers and the tip of the primary feathers, usually given as a ratio of the projection to the tertial length. This is a very important feature to keep in mind for identification purposes. Short or long, depending on the species, streaked or plain coloured, the undertail coverts are a great clue for identification, although not always easy to spot in field conditions. The upper tail coverts, like the rump, are sometimes hidden by the wing feathers. The tail feathers are called rectrices. There are 12 of them, apart from a few exceptions. They reveal important information. Keep an eye on length, tip shape, and distinctive color patterns. The tibia, which is feathered, usually remains hidden or partially hidden by the belly. The tarsus, not feathered in the case of most passerines, its length and colour, or even thickness, need to be taken into account. Hind claw, its length can be important for some ID conflicts between similar species. So, that was passerine topography. We hope you found it interesting and invite you to share it with your friends or use it as a teaching tool for beginners. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode of Wingbeats. Beats.